Hello everyone, my name is Smiley Yao and I'll be presenting our paper, Stimuli Sensitive Hox Processes for Personalized Student Procrastination Modeling. This paper is a joint work with Sichen Zhao, Dr. Sherry Sahibi, and Dr. Reza Feizi. Before formally introducing our paper, we want to go over some definitions first. By procrastination, it usually means a voluntary delay, especially knowing that the consequences could be harmful. A common representation of procrastination is cramming behaviors. In this paper particularly, we are interested in procrastination modeling in MOOCs, where MOOCs represent massive open online courses. And the reason we want to do procrastination modeling is because it could be very prevalent, especially in MOOCs, and the consequences could be very harmful. So that we want to detect and predict procrastination in order to further regulate and prevent in the future. Despite importance in the literature, many methods are not ideal. Usually they are static, not personalized, usually they have to discard missing data, and usually fail to capture important factors in procrastination modeling such as the triggers of procrastination. As a solution to these limitations in this work, we propose our stimuli-sensitive Hox process model that is temporal, that models data collaboratively, and predict missing data. Most importantly, it captures three important dynamic types of external triggering stimuli of procrastination. Starting with the formulation, suppose in the MOOC we have N assignments and U students, so we formulate the problem of student procrastination modeling in this MOOC to be the problem of modeling N times U that amount of student assignment pairs, where each of the student assignment pair is characterized by all the activities of the corresponding student conducted toward the corresponding assignment. So as example, in the student assignment pair IJ, there are eight activities and each of them is characterized by its timestamp that randomly fall on the continuous timeline. Based on our previous published findings, continue on the formulation, we further assume that there are two types of triggers, namely the internal triggers and external ones. Recall that each student assignment pair can be represented in the figure above. In this paper, another way to represent those collection of activities is presented in the figure below. Specifically, we assume that some of the activities can be triggered internally, meaning that some of the activities characterized by those orange circles are triggered by the previous activities. As example, a student might decide to do a quiz question because they just watched related lecture video. But on the other hand, there are also activities that are triggered by the external environment. And in our empirical analysis, there are three important triggers, which are respectively habit, or in other words, uh, the frequency of the student uh, coming to the course as a habit. And also there is the opening or the availability of the assignment. And finally, we have also the deadline of the assignment. So to model these two types of triggering facts, following the convention of the modeling of Hox processes, we define each of the we model each of the student assignment pair by its intensity function, which is a function of time that describes the number of activities. Specifically we parameterize intensity of each student assignment pair as the modeling of both external stimuli and internal stimuli. More specifically, to model or to quantify the activities that are triggered by student habit, we use this shifted pseudo function to capture the periodical behaviors of students coming to the course. To model the, the number of activities that are triggered by the opening of the assignment, we use this exponential function with the assumption that this effect will decay over time with exponential speed. In order to model the deadline, we use a reverse log, log normal function to kind of assimilate a scenario that a, a, the, that the effect of deadline start with a very low importance, but with the approaching of the deadline, a student might have more and more activities and then eventually when a student finished the assignment, the intensity that coming from this deadline will go down again. 
and last but not least, in order to model the internal stimuli, we adopted the most common used kernel function, which is in an exponential function that describes uh, the triggering effects of the his history to the future, uh, assuming that this kind of triggering also decays over time with the exponential speed. The previous few slides give a solution to the modeling of student assignment pairs by observing their historical observations, but it is also very common to have no such historical observations to be used at all. So that means in the MOOC, it is possible to have two types of assignments. And the first time is something we call partially observed assignments, in which there are historical observations to be used. For example, a student has started working on an assignment and therefore has left a trajectory of activities towards it. But on the other hand, there are also something we call future assignments, in which there is only missing historical observation. For example, a student hasn't started working on assignment or has decided to skip on assignment for now. The later cases are usually discarded in the literature simply because it is very hard to obtain meaningful and accurate prediction when there is no historical observations to be used in the modeling. But in our paper, our goal is to be able to predict the future activities for both type of assignments even when there is missing history. And how we're going to do it is going to be reflected in our loss function that will be introduced in the next slide. Our loss function, to simply put it, consists of two components. We first have inactive likelihood of observing the histories of available student assignment pairs and the likelihood can be computed based on the intensity function we introduced earlier. On the other hand, we also have the regularization, regularization loss, which comes from the constraints we have on the parameterization of internal triggering and also external triggerings, which include student habit, assignment opening, and deadline. For the parameters that are in the matrix format, we assume that they have lower structure, and by using collaborative filtering-based method, we are able to infer the parameter on the missing student assignment pairs based on the observation that comes from the student assignment pairs that do have historical activities. And for more details of our model, include the explicit form of our loss function, the optimization details, please go check our paper. In the section of experiments, we'll go over baseline approaches and data set and some experiment setup. We're going to talk about evaluation of our model and the baseline approaches with a ablation study. And we're going to end this section with the procrastination analysis. For baseline approaches, we consider several state of the art point process models and each of them is evaluated based on four aspects. We care about if they can model internal stimuli, if they can capture complex external stimuli, if they can handle missing data, and if they are used for education application. And uh, our proposed model is the only one that checks all the four boxes. In this paper, we consider both simulated and real-world data sets. In the simulated one, we simulated 500 students, 20 assignments, and in total around 100,000 activities. To simulate the missing scenario, we randomly selected 10% of student assignment pairs and their total activities to be entirely missing, which uh, leads our same 10. Similarly, we by randomly selecting 90% of student assignment pairs, we also obtain our C90. And in the real world data sets, we obtain Canvas data set, which is collected from Canvas Network online platform, which has 384 students, six assignment, and around 729,000 activities. We also obtain a Coursera data uh, collected from the Morph platform, in which there are 246 students, eight assignments, and around 42,000 activities. In the experiment setup, in terms of partially done assignments, we use the first 70% of activities of each student assignment pair as the training, and then the rest of 30% to be partially missing test set. Partially missing here means only part of the student assignment pair activities are missing. On the other hand, 
When it comes to future assignments, when there are no historical observations available, we do not use anything for the training. But for the future activities, they are going to be used in the completely missing test set, meaning that the historical observations are completely missing. In our data set, in Sing 10, Sing 90, and the two real world data sets, the ratio between partially done assignments to future assignments are respectively 90 to 10, 10 to 90, and 80 to 20. To evaluate our model, we consider two metrics. The first one is the parameter estimation, in which we compute the RMSE of the estimated parameters against the ground truth. And then we also consider time prediction, which is the RMSE of the predicted next arrival time. And in both cases, of course, the lower the error, the better the performance is. The performance of our model in terms of parameter estimation can be summarized by this table, where all the learned parameters and their RMSEs are computed uh, in the table. And uh, based on the fact that the RMSEs in SYNC 90 and the completely missing test sets are not much higher than the counterparts, uh, we are able to conclude that our model is robust to the missing sequences. And to visualize the performance, uh, we also presented the true intensity and the predicted intensity of a, a simulated student assignment pair. And we see that this figure uh, present that our model is able to accurately capture the true dynamics of the data. We now present our model's performance in terms of time prediction. Comparing to all the baseline approaches, our model, which is characterized in blue, achieves lower RMSE in time prediction in almost all the settings. And similar to the previous slide, the consistent low RMSE in completely missing test set comparing to partially missing test set suggests the robustness of our model to the missing data. In our population study, we want to examine the importance of modeling each type of stimuli by taking out the corresponding par parameterization. And the uh, full model is characterized in red, which usually enjoys lower RMC in all the settings, which suggests the importance of modeling each type of stimuli. Uh, another important observation is that in the partially missing set, internal triggering effect is more important in morph, and on the other hand, in completely missing set, that line is a very important factor, especially in Canvas. In our procrastination analysis, we first cluster all the student assignment pairs based on only their learned parameters we used in the intensity function, and we're able to identify three clusters in Canvas. So the first one is procrastination-like behaviors in the sense that based on the figure, we see that they have less sensitive, they are less sensitive to the deadline and the assignment opening, and they usually have more bursty and intense behaviors. Uh, at the same time, we also observe cluster of students who we called early birds, who usually finish assignments earlier and who are more sensitive to the assignment opening and who also had less bursty but more regular behaviors. We also have another group of students who have somewhere in between the two clusters. Similarly, in MORPH, we also identify three clusters, uh, which are respectively procrastination-like behaviors, early births, and more extreme procrastinating-like behaviors. We now examine the distribution of student grades in all the clusters identified by our model. And one main conclusion is that the grades in all the clusters are significant different validated by critical value test and especially that procrastination like behaviors are associated with lower grades which suggests that our model is able to capture meaningful underlying procrastination patterns and their association with student performance so to conclude we propose our novel model for the modeling of procrastination that is personalized that can predict the missing sequences and can capture both internal and external stimuli our model achieves lower time predictions than state-of-the-art and is also shown to be robust to the missing sequences. Furthermore, our model captured procrastination stimuli and each of them has shown to be important in the ablation study. Last but not least, our model identifies meaningful types of procrastination behaviors that are also associated with grades. That concludes our paper. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to check our GitHub page and feel free to let us know if you have any questions.